Hello everyone and welcome back to Hidden Image Limited and uh, it's been a few hard days, I can't lie um, as I'm sure it has been for all of us in this community uh, I'm glad Pill, the actual official Pill page, I'm glad they posted something I was wor really worried that they wouldn't you never know these days do you um, I was starting to get a bit fucked off with them with how long it was taking for them to post about Keith. Um, but it didn't take them too long to post about the Queen, did it? But whatever, you know, they posted. And they probably... John's going through a lot, like, with his wife and stuff. And I think they're working on an album. So fair enough, you know, it's devastating news. But, so today is a little... I wanted to do a live stream, and I wanted to do a listening party where we will listen to something with Keith Levine in just in memory and have a chat and talk about uh, just pill, you know. But um, unfortunately, can't because I don't have any free time. I'm still in my work shirt, as I was in my last videos. Um, and every time I do have free time, my brother's in, so I can't really do it. Um, so, yeah. So instead I'm doing this little video, I might live stream in the future where we can have a little chat and talk about pill and things, I'm not sure. But So what I'm doing today is going to be running through my Keith Levine collection, just as a little tribute um, collection sort of video, just everything I own that has him in it, because I just feel like it's a, a good, interesting video. So... Without further ado, let's just get into it. You get the concept. So, first of all, I just want to talk about this public image. Sorry if you can see the screen. It's like a an effect. It's going on forever. But yeah, this is the first Pill record. This is on CD. It's the remastered edition. And this was the first Pill album I ever owned. This very coffee. Uh, coffee? Copy. <laughs> this very copy. Um... I bought this, and I bought Sacrifice by Motorhead. I was a big Sex Pistols fan. And those were two albums that I never heard. So I took them home, and I listened to Sacrifice, the uh, first Motorhead album I ever bought. And I liked it. It wasn't the best, but I absolutely liked it. Put this on, and I just... I couldn't stand it. I thought it was a terrible record. I thought it was lazy. You know, two religions. Theme is like ten minutes long. I just couldn't stand it. But upon re repeat listens, I, I loved it. This is just a tremendous record and one of my favourites now. Um, especially by the band Pill. This is just a fantastic record. And uh, yeah, so it's just a CD version. And uh, there's Jim and there's Pill. Rest in peace, man. Uh, not Pill. There's Keith. Sorry, I was reading it. There's Keith and uh, Jim... And uh, there's Jar Wobble and John Lydon, you know, it's just a brilliant record, great theming, the songs are great, it's not too long as well, so you can put it on have a blast. Here's my vinyl copy of that, I don't know which version this is, I think it's the original version. And it's a great listen on vinyl, but unfortunately mine's a bit scratched, so on theme it'll skip, but it's kind of interesting to listen to. Um, yeah, God bless it, man. It's my my hero musically, but there you go. So there's the vinyl version. Um, after that, I bought second edition on CD, which I will find should be in here. Yep. So I bought that. I hated first issue, but, um, but then I bought second edition, thinking maybe the first album. Maybe they rushed it, they didn't have a lot of money, whatever. Maybe the second one's better. I bought it, and I thought it was even worse. You know, if you've listened to this album, it's very experimental. Some songs like Pop Tones go on for a long time. Uh, Albatross definitely does chant. A lot of it is very crazy, and not like any other music you would ever hear. But again, just like with First Issue, upon repeat listens, this has become possibly my favourite record of all time, this one. I absolutely love Metalbox, this is second edition, but Metalbox is what it is. You know, it's, it is Metalbox. And this is Keith's masterpiece. It's a brilliant album, and I I just absolutely adore it. And that's Keith on the cover, 
Um, disorientated, I know, but you know that's him. Um, they're not on the back. I think that's John Lydon, and uh, there should be jar wobble somewhere. But uh, yeah, there they were three piece at this point because uh, there's loads of drummers on this album, including Keith himself. And if you want to get into Pill, this is a great place to start. I think it's got Keith's best riffs, you know, like Pop Tones Chant, Graveyard is another one, Bad Baby's a brilliant song. Keith's doing a lot on here. He does drums, he does bass, he does synth, he does guitar, so it's definitely his masterpiece. But it's the band's masterpiece, you know. you got Ja Wobble on bass. He's just a phenomenal bass player. Uh, John Lydon's at his lyrical peak here. He's writing poetry and just screaming them, feeling every emotion of every syllable, you know. And all the drumming on here, it, it's different every track, so it's it's a great record. And it's a long one. It's it's an hour long, but when you listen to it, it just flies by. And uh, I'll show you my vinyl copies of that. So here's my vinyl copy of second edition. There's all the lyrics and uh, the inner stuff. And of course there's uh, the actual records, but we don't need to get those out. It's just an absolute brilliant album. Every song, you know, when I do my reactions, I go, oh, this song's an eight or whatever. But really every song's a 10, you know, if I'm thinking about them, uh, then I might make them a bit lower, but if I'm just saying, oh, this is a 10 out of a 10 album, every song's brilliant. And, of course, here's Metal Box. This is second edition, but it's first version, which was Metal Box. It came in this metal tin. And uh, this is the best way to listen to this album. If you haven't, definitely get it. Um, because it's just so alien, you know. It's like a time capsule. You're holding this. It's like you found it buried underground. Especially now it's old. There's all these dirty fingerprints and it's uh, getting a bit, you know, dirty as I say. It's just a pill. It's a metal canister. You open it and uh, you've got this like sleeve, uh, well, this little piece of paper which has all the songs on it in like this blood red, really messily. Put on there and then you put a record on and it's this most alien music you ever heard it is unlike anything else this album and it's definitely the way to listen to second edition in the metal box form uh yeah uh, and i don't have metal box that version on cd but i got my brother it um let's talk about some of the singles that i have as well if I can find them there. Where have I put them? So it doesn't seem like I've got all of them here for some reason. Oh, there they are. Uh, so, yeah. So I haven't got all the pill singles. But I've got the first one. Someone gave me this for free. Uh, someone on Facebook. I remember their name, but I'm not disclosing it here just in case. But yeah. So thank you so much. Uh, this is a brilliant single. And, you know, Pill were just an amazing band. And still are, but, you know, they they were fucking brilliant back then. You see, this it, it came in a newspaper. Um, which I just dropped. I like that. And there's the band. And they've got their own stories. And uh, there's John and Keith. And um, big poster sort of thing. Yeah, it's just inventive and really cool. It's And it's a fantastic single, you know. Public Image, brilliant single. And the Cowboy song is even better, in my opinion. It's just absolute chaos. It's fantastic. Um, I did a cover of it, but I want to redo all my covers. Because they're not too good, in my opinion. I've learnt so much more about producing since... I was listening to some earlier, uh, just reminiscing on making them. Even though it wasn't that long ago, it feels like forever ago. And I'm like, why did I make the bass that bassy? It's impossible to listen to. Um, but yeah, so some other ones, I got Def Disco. Can't remember where I got this. Um, it's got no birds on the back. Well, as the 
other song as the B-side. And this is also one of the best. Uh, a dickhead move, they put the sleeve upside down. So it's actually like that. But, you know, great song. I'm sure you've all heard it. And um, No Birds is one of the best as well. So there's that. Then I got Flowers of Romance. A record fair in Norfolk. And it's just brilliant. Uh, there's the band at the time, John Keefe and Jeanette. And uh, Martin Atkins was in the band as well, so I'm not quite sure why he's not on the sleeve. Home is Where the Heart Is is the B-side, which I think was the final one with Jar Wobble. And it's just a fantastic track. Uh, one of Levine's best riffs is Home is Where the Heart Is. And uh, Flowers of Romance is just a fucking brilliant song. Uh, and I've got a live bootleg as well. This is not first issue, uh, even though it's cropped. Uh, this is um, the Riot gig. So basically they did a gig. And uh, well, it wasn't a gig, it was a show. But for some reason it was advertised as a gig. People got there. They saw it was a show where they were all stood behind the screen, mocking the crowd instead of actually uh, playing music like a gig. And it caused a riot. So, yeah. Just a fantastic uh, bootleg to listen to. Especially because you never really hear them play those songs from the Flowers of Romance uh, live. Back in them days anyway. You do now, but not really then. So, the final single that I have is a 12 inch. And it's this. Uh, that's, this is not a love song. Not a great song in my opinion. But Levine's on it, so I had to include it. It is a piss take of a song, but yeah, it's not a great song in my opinion, but you know, it's different. <laughs> yeah, it's from Commercial Zone sort of era, so they were trying to mock pop music in a, in a way, but yeah, I think every other song on the album's great, but love songs are not that good. Blue Water is the uh, second song, great version, and a remix of Love Song and Public Image which is probably a live version, I imagine, yeah. So, there's that. Now let's carry on. So, um, albums, albums, albums. Be right back. And I'm back, and uh, I had to go to pick up The Flowers of Romance, which also have a CD. I actually bought... Um, so I bought first issue and then second edition on CD, and I didn't really like them. But then I bought album, um, which is their fifth album after Levine and Jar and Atkins and all that had left. But I loved it, so I thought, well, maybe I should go back. And I bought their third album, The Flowers of Romance, and I hated this with a passion. Um... <laughs> I mean, at this point, the first two albums were starting to grow on me a bit, but this one, no. I remember first listening to it on a train, and I was like, this is just terrible. I was an idiot, because this is one of the best albums ever made, in my opinion. Nick's, uh, I can't say his name, is it Nick Lawney? Nick Laney? Who I recently spoke to, I had to thank him for his work on this album, it's just tremendous. His production is... Something else, some of the best production of all time on this record, in my opinion. That kick drum sound and the snare and the synths and stuff that you hear on here. Essentially, Jawobble left the band, who was the bassist. So what did they decide to do? They didn't really want to fully replace him. So they used drums instead, which is insane. And uh, Keith Levine uh, didn't want to play guitar at all, so... He used every other instrument that he could find that wasn't guitar. I think there is still guitar on this record, um, like on Go Back, but still, you know, great record, avant-garde, crazy, you know, genius record, and uh, I think I got this at a record fair for about £15, it's well worth it. Well worth it. I mean, it's not my favourite Pill album that had been Metal Box, but this is still one of the best. Um, just a phenomenal album. 
I've skipped an album by accident, so I'm sorry about that, but that is Par Paris or Printemps. I don't know how you say it. Paris in the Spring. I also got this from the same record fair I got uh, Flowers of Romance from, and this, I can't remember how much it cost me, but it's a brilliant record. It's a live record. Um, for some reason, it's a very short one, because I believe this was recorded over two nights, and... Uh, they only included seven of the songs, which is a shame. I would like to hear the rest. Martin Atkins, the drummer on this, has the rest, but I don't think he's released them for technical, legal reasons. But I really wish the band... Now Keith's dead. You'd think maybe they'd release a deluxe version of this with all the songs. But I think John Lydon doesn't like this record and doesn't want people to listen to it. I think. I've heard that as a rumour. Could be bollocks, but you know. Uh, so take that as with what you will. Um, but I love this record. It's not my favourite. You know, it's a live record. And uh, we will listen to it on the channel. But I think they did better live stuff. Like if you listen to... If you're just searching pill, pop tones live and... We'll get up the old Grey Whistle test and the John Peel ones um, and the chant on Check It Out and all that. Those those early live ones were amazing. Uh, whereas this one, I think Keith's guitar is a bit too clean and the production isn't great. It's really weird. It is bootleg quality. But, you know, still a great album. And those are the band at the time. Um, well, three of them. Jar ja was still in the band. There's Martin Atkins. There's an albatross, so Keith Levine and John Lydon. Um, not sure where Jar is. Maybe he had left at this point, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't have that on CD. I don't even know if it's out on CD. Uh, but here's another one I have. It's a bootleg uh, of them playing live at Identity Factory. Um, and this one's way better. This is a bootleg. But it's way better. I think the sound quality is better. The song choice is just brilliant. Uh, I think this is with... Um, what's it called? Richard Dodansky's first performance. Which is strange. This is, I believe, Martin Atkins' live debut. And this is Richard's live debut. Um, and it's brilliant. I think this is better. It opens up with chant. It's got Def Disco. Um, they debuted a lot of the songs from... Uh, Metalbox, because this was before Metalbox came out, I think. I think, I'm not too sure. But, um, yes, yeah, so you hear some of the earlier versions, and it's just brilliant. Uh, I totally recommend getting your hands on this if you can. It's just fantastic. It's got all this, this cool back as well, where it's got all these old bands, like Madness, one of my favourite bands. Uh, I think it's got Joy Division somewhere as well. So, yeah, just really cool. There's Keith. Uh, John, Ja, John, yeah, great live record, definitely worth getting. Um, I have some more live stuff, but they're all CDs, I'll go into those now. Um, so, in, I'll try to keep it in order. So, this one right here is a bootleg of them playing live at the 140. We'll do that one. Yeah, so this one here. Interesting bootleg, you know why? This is their first ever gig as a band. Uh, there's Keith with his big Travis Bean wedge, John. There's Jar in the background, Jim Walker on this. This is from a few days after, I believe a few days after the first issue came out. And you can tell some of the crowd are still angry. They wanted Sex Pistols music. And they gave them it, because there's two sound check parts, which are great. You hear Levine just fucking about. Uh, theme, which is brilliant, a brilliant live version of Theme. It's a bit slower, but it's it's still great. Um, and then you got Belson Was A Gas, which is a Sex Pistols song, but it's one of their best. And then Low Life, and then Sod In Heaven, it says, but Sod In Heaven is a religion too then Attack, and then Cowboy Song played twice in a row without John, and then Public played without John, a uh, public image. I'm not sure why uh, they played them without John, or why the set list was like this, because it's a mental set list, uh, to be honest. Playing Cowboy Song twice, playing 
Sex Pistols songs and stuff like that. But yeah, that's their first gig as a bootleg CD. Uh, it's really interesting to listen to. Uh, then we got their second gig as a bootleg CD. There's the band at the time. This was their second gig. Um, and the set list is way better. Um, theme, low life, Annalisa, religion, public image. They had Belson was a gas again for some reason. Attack, then Problems for some reason, uh, which is another Sex Pistols song. Then Public Image again for some reason, and Annalisa again for some reason. Um, those last two make sense, but they already did them, so they've played them twice in this gig. Sorry about the glare. But yeah, either way, it's still a brilliant bootleg. And, uh, you get some really cool information there. Not sure if you could read that, maybe pause. I don't know how the quality is, but it's it's fantastic. I definitely recommend getting your hands on this if you can. Um, another one, I'll see which one came first. Um, I'm not sure, we'll go over this one. This is Metal Tape, which is another live bootleg of them playing on the Metal, bo uh, metal Box Tour. Um, Opens with Fodder Stomp. Now, Fodder Stomp live in these days was just fucking brilliant. You've got to listen to it. It's something something else. And I think on one of the earlier live versions, you heard Jar Wobble playing what would later be the bass line for Bad Night on um, Commercial Zone, which Jar isn't on. So that's crazy. Uh, you got Career In, Chan, Annalisa, Pop Tones, Attack. Public Image, Swan Lake, Memories, and that's it. But it's just a great, great album. Uh, again, sound quality with all of these is a bit hit or miss, but the tones you get out of this is just crazy good. Um, there you go. And then the final live CD I have is this one here. This was actually the first one I bought, Career with a Future. Um, it's also got the interview from the Tom Snyder show, I think. Um, my case is unfortunately broken. Uh, but this one's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's from the Olympic Auditorium. I'm sure you can probably find this gig on YouTube if you search for it. And um, it claims to have Fodder Stomp, Careering, Annalisa, Attack, Low Life Chant, Death Disco, Pop Tones, Bad Baby, uh, Public Image, Memories and profile whatever that is but i think two of those songs are missing so but still if you're on about sound quality and um power this is a great one to get the last bootleg i have is this one here and it is a bootleg but it's not really a live bootleg it's um memories which is studio rehearsals from 1981 to 1983 so you hear a lot of Cuts, uh, rough versions, you know, different mixes of the Commercial Zone album, and um, a lot of unknown instrumentals that just never made it anywhere. Uh, yeah, so you got the slab, two unknown songs, Bad Night, a rough version, two unknown songs, a disco version of Bad Night, three unknown songs, 1981, which eventually got made into. The 1981 you know off, uh, this is what you want, this is what you get. But this version's miles better. And then Flowers of Romance and an instrumental version of that. But it has two discs. Uh, and the disc two is a live disc. And uh, you got pop... It's I, I don't think it's live, actually. I think it's... Um, I remember. It's, it's, a it's like a rehearsal session. So you've got pop tones... Flowers of Romance, Pop Tones, a jam, Public Image, an instrumental jam, and then Bad Life and Public Image again. It's brilliant. I definitely recommend it if you're a Pill fan, uh, if you're a Keith fan. The back, you got John, Jeanette, and Keith. I think that's Jeanette anyway. I can't quite remember. Uh, I'm very sorry if I'm mistaken. Um, and yeah. So the final pill Keith Levine album was Commercial Zone, which I have right here. I have the first version. I think the second version got printed with a black cover 
and the pill logo and it says commercials are limited edition and it had a different track list but the same songs so they were just a different order I can't find that version anywhere but still this is a great album it's a shame it's unfinished but it, it, you could tell it's a great album uh, the pill logo is slightly different not sure why probably copyright or something this was released by Keith Levine it wasn't released by pill when he got fired from the band he decided to just release the demo tapes they had as commercial zone and yeah it's a fantastic album in my opinion um, just a great one and I have kind of got it on CD I made my own little version because I wanted to listen to it in the car uh, so I just ripped the tracks off YouTube and uh, put it on a CD but this is obviously not the proper cover this is just something I made um, with the songs and title and all that the back it's just track list uh, the year it came out uh, some background I could, of course I do that and um, the personnel behind it and there's this disc uh, I really wish there was an official CD but there isn't so I had to make one um, yeah next up we have Keith Levine's solo albums that I own and I only own three of them unfortunately I never got Commercial Zone 2014. I really wanted it. I I am I, I really really wanted that so bad, but I can't find it anywhere. And if I do find it, I know it's going to cost me my life savings. And I really wanted to email Keith or someone he knows personally to get a copy of it even if it's digital. Um, but I was so nervous to do so. Same for asking him if he wanted an interview. I couldn't do it. I I kept getting so nervous. I just didn't do it. Um, but still, you know, I really, really regret that. And I wish I did. Um, fantastic, fantastic record. Uh, Violent Opposition by Keith Levine. Um, G-Force and Multi-Image. If you haven't heard this, you have to. You hear some of Keith's more uh, reggae influences and punk influences on here. It's not as crazy as some of the stuff you'd hear with him and Pill. But, you know, very vibrant cover. Uh, I'm Looking For Something has a flea on bass. So, yeah, he did a cover of If Six Was Nine by Jimi Hendrix. Um, most of it's instrumentals. I remember there being some reggae on here as well. Uh, he did a cover of Cold Turkey by John Lennon. Yeah, I think he was a big Beatles fan. He used to wear that Beatles shirt all the time. Um, here's just some information on the guy. Yeah, God, I, I really, really miss him. Um, It feels like a dream, like a terrible dream. Like I don't, I'm sure you guys get this. I just feel like I want to wake up and have his death be a dream and have it push me to asking him commercial zone or asking him for an interview. But you know, I also have Search for Absolute Zero. I can't remember how much I spent on this, but I think it was a pretty penny for both of these next two and that as well actually uh, but this is brilliant got a big interview with Keith on here as well um, which I've only heard once so I don't fully remember it but I remember it being quite long this is a fantastic album Case is Broke as well um, search for absolute zero uh, and it has a DVD as well I think uh, where it's got like these images I think I could be wrong um, but it's just a brilliant album and you can get it on vinyl or you could uh, a few months back anyway I, I'm definitely going to get it on vinyl now it's gone but yeah great one again mostly instrumentals if not all instrumentals but it's really original and interesting to listen to as is murder global killer in the crowd um, this one's great, absolutely great. One of my favourites, and I'm actually going to cover some of the songs off this 
EP. I was planning on doing that before he died, and now I have to do it after. Um, but it's just great. You hear some of his classic guitar tone and played some dub music, some punk. Um, it's just a great, great EP, and I totally recommend getting it if you can. And finally, another one that I actually forgot. Uh, well, I didn't forget I had, but I forgot to pick it up. Um, EP by Dry Wobble and Keith Levine. This is four tracks from the Yin and Yang album. And I really need that album, actually. Uh, I've been meaning to get it for the longest time, but uh, yeah, I only got EP. Uh, it's a great little listen, you know, it feels like a true sequel to what you would hear on Metalbox, to be honest. With Jar and Keith just playing uh, some great music. Um, yeah, just great. Jar Wobble on vocals as well. Keith on all guitars, it's just just mental. Yin and Yang, Strut, Mississippi, Back on the Block. All of these songs are just great. Um, I really need the Yin and Yang album. So, there you go. Hope this video was interesting to you. Um, and hopefully I can get a live stream listening party or something out soon. Or even just if it's a conversation, I don't know. I just really want to talk about this stuff because it's interesting and really, really upsetting, isn't it? Really such a talented guy um, throughout his entire body of work. Rest in peace, man. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in whatever the next video is.